This is a quick and easy introduction to logarithms. Um, it's not intended to even scratch the surface of all the things you can do, but it's intended to be a good way to get started with the, the basics. So uh, we're one of the things about logarithms is that they come with a base, and I'm only going to talk about logarithms with base 10, or um, those are also called common logs. And they usually are denoted with LOG, not, you'll often see an LN called the natural log, and I'm not even going to talk about that in this video. So the first thing is the logarithm as a digit counter. So the logarithm of, it's a function, it takes in a number, it spits out another, fun, another number, and the logarithm of, say, uh, 100 is very simple. You count the digits, three digits, Subtract one, uh, or in other words, you're counting the zeros in this case, and that's going to be two. The logarithm of a thousand. Count the digits, that's four. Subtract one, and that's going to be three. We'll see why the subtract one in a little bit. Okay. Logarithm of a million. Six zeros or seven figures, that's six. Some simple cases are the logarithm of ten is just exactly one. And that has to do with the fact that we're using base 10 here. The logarithm of 1, that's very special. That requires one digit, and so you get log of 1 is equal to 0. Now, um, we're going to need to know things like what is the log of, for example, 22. Okay, well, it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, but we don't know exactly what it is. And in fact, we're going to need to use technology to figure out exactly. But I want to I want to delay that for a second, because I want to move to these to these other themes, and I'm going to cycle back to the idea of a digit counter and exactly what what the log of 22 might be. Logarithms really really crucial thing. Logarithms are about ratios. Okay, so let's look at a couple of these examples. Notice that when I go from um, log of one equals zero to log of ten equals one, what that says actually let me just uh, another bullet item here. I claim that adding 1 to the logarithm of a number means, well, let's see what that means. I add 1 to the logarithm, I multiply the actual number by 10. So I'm secretly really still trying to describe this number, but I'm just describing it here in terms of how many digits I need to, to write the actual number. OK, so adding 1 to the logarithm, 0 to 1, went from 1 to 10. Does adding another one go for, go up to 19, maybe, because I added 9 going here? Not at all. Adding 1 to that, that brings us up to here, that multiplies the number by 10. Adding 1 to the log again, that's adding another 0, that multiplies by 10 again. Okay, so adding 1 to the logarithm means multiply the actual number by 10. Or another way to say that is if two numbers, at least the numbers on this list, we'll see things like 22 in a minute, if two numbers have a ratio of 10, like 100 is 10 times bigger than 10, then their logarithms will differ by 1. So it's really important that a ratio, the quotient of two numbers, 100 divided by 10, has turned into a difference. And that's a really that's probably the most crucial thing about logarithms. Okay? So what about if two numbers have a ratio of 100, then the logs will differ by well, remember it's a digit counter. And we could get it off these examples, but let's see if you can go back. Remember it's a digit counter, it's just offset by 1. But if I multiply if two things have a ratio of 100, one of them has two more digits. And so the logs will differ by 2. We could check that with these two, for example. 1,000 is 100 times 10. And indeed, 3 is 1 plus 2. So a ratio gets turned into a difference. And so um, if you step up the ladder of logs, 0, 1, 2, 3, and you think you're taking just these ad additive steps, adding one each time, if you do that to the logs of the numbers, you're actually going multiplicatively you are taking this one and multiplying it repeatedly, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, which is a really useful thing to do. There's lots of cases where we want to focus more on ratios. Okay, So that means that there's, there's two things that are consequences of that. 
logs are great and appropriate when ratios are of most interest. When it's, it feels more natural to compare things by saying, wow, that's 10 times as big. In that, in that case, logs might be a really good idea. Also, logs are great um, to compare or group together numbers of very different size. So for example, log of 1 is 0, log of a million is 6. Well, 0 and 6 are not incredibly different numbers. It wouldn't be hard to graph, say, 0 and 6 on the same graph. But 1 and a million, it's, a hard, it's hard to put those on the same graph. Either the million's going to go off the top or one's going to be invisible. Okay, So whenever you have numbers of very different size, logarithms are good. And especially when you want to um, compare those things by ratios instead of differences, then logarithms are very appropriate. Okay, So this last theme, logarithms are inverse to exponents. Really quickly, um, there's a way to write all these powers of 10, all, well, all these numbers as powers of 10. So for example, uh, I've got the log of 10 to the 6th. That's one way to write a million. 1 followed by 6 zeros is just 10 multiplied by itself 6 times, or 10 to the 6th. What this says is the log of 10 to the 6th is equal to 6. That's not a coincidence. Similarly, like for 1,000, the log of 10 to the 3 is equal to 3. So logarithms take a number that's expressible as a power of 10 and just strip off that power. And that's often how logs are described. It's often a good definition of logs. So, um, so for example, here's a question. What number would have, well, let's say n, would have log of n equal to, let's say, 1.5? We haven't seen such an example. And it's not clear what it would be except that it would be somewhere between 10 and 100. Oh, maybe it's 22. Well, it's not going to turn out to be 22, but it's going to be in that ballpark. It should be some number between 1 and 2. So in, in some sense, it's a number that takes 2.5 digits to, to write. This is two digits just barely. This is just barely three digits. Somewhere in the middle is something that takes 2.5 digits, because remember, the log is the number of digits minus 1. I like to say it's the number of zeros, but I'm going to follow another source and say it's the number of digits minus 1. It's a good way to, to talk about it. OK, well, let's look at this. OK, it would be something It would fit into this pattern. The log of 10 to the 1.5 power should be equal to 1.5. OK, that tells us the answer. n is 10 to the 1.5 power. Now, if you remember how to work with like fractional exponents and things like that, that's 10 to the 3 halves, which is the square root of 10 cubed. But let's not worry about that too much. Let's trust the technology. And just say, let the calculator, or the computer, calculate 10 to the 1.5. Okay, it turns out to be about 31.6. Okay, the upshot is that I can convert back and forth um, by either taking the log using the log button on the calculator, or using the 10 to the x button on the calculator. So, for example, uh, log of 22. Let's let the calculator, let's let the computer calculate that. OK. Uh, oops. It's, oh uh, wait. I need to, this thing needs to be told as log base 10. I think it was assuming it was the natural log. There we go. OK. This is actually 1.342. And so um, if you have the log button on the calculator, you won't need the, the base 10. The, the log button on the calculator just says, just says LOG. So this says it takes about two and a third digits to express 22, because it's definitely bigger than 10, but less than 100. And then if you go a little further, the log base 10 of 31.6, well, oh, that's not working. Let's test it. The claim was this should work out to be 1.5. Yeah, pretty close, because I, I rounded off. But it's basically 1.5, OK? So that tells us how to complete a table like this. If I wanted to know what's 1.5, it's 31.6. Um, so practically speaking, you're going to be using the log button to take big numbers or numbers that we want to compare with ratios and turn them into things that are smaller and that we just look at in comparing with differences. To go back from a logarithm number to the original number, you use the 10 to the x button. 
Um, let me say a little bit more about ratios, though. Let's, let's look at this 31.6. And let me just say one more thing. In what sense does this really, does this really make sense? It's saying, let's put this in our master table, log base 10, well, I don't need log base 10 anymore, log of 31.6 equals 1.5. So does that really make sense? It's saying that 31.6, this weird weirdo number, is halfway in between 10 and 100. Most people would say halfway 10 be between 10 and 100 is probably 55, the average of those two numbers. But in some sense, this is our new candidate for halfway between 10 and 100. Why is that? Well, it's really because it's all about ratios. Let me just do a couple of really simple calculations. Let me put it right here at the end of the ratio part. I'm going to take 31.6, and I'm going to divide it by 10. I'm going to compare them not by taking the difference, but by taking the ratio. Well, that's obviously 3.16. OK? It's a little bit harder calculation. What about 100 over 31.6? So 31.6 is supposed to be halfway in between 10 and 100. And I claim it is halfway in between in terms of ratio comparisons. 31.6 over 10 is 3.16. 100 over 31.6, it's very close to 3.16. And in fact, it would be exact if I hadn't um, rounded off. Okay, So if I go from 10 and I multiply by this magic number, 3.16, I get to 31.6. And then I use the same ratio I get from 31.6 up to 100. So in fact, it really does make sense that this is in some way halfway between 10 and 100 on a ratio-based scale. Okay. So if you want to think about what you're calculating when you press the log button, it's a digit counter where when you look at get when you get you get a non-integer answer, it's interpreted a little creatively, and how it's interpreted is all about ratios. So that when you take the difference of logs, you're taking ratios of the original numbers. And then if you want to go backwards from a log number to the original number, just take 10 to the x.